Hey guys, I want to talk about something uh, important today. How do you pick your stock intraday wise? I mean, you look at the stock and what makes you decide that you want to take a trade? Now, it happened to me today in the trading room. It was very obvious and I want to share that uh, thought process with you. So take a look at NVIDIA and let's go through this trade and understand why did I take this trade? Well, it all started with my trading room. The post uh, of let's go long NVIDIA was posted by one of my trading room members, Javad in this case, who just noticed that NVIDIA is looking well and asked whether we should go long. So, okay, um, at this point uh, I was kind of bold looking for a new trade. I clicked on NVIDIA and took a look at the point where I took my first sight of what's going on in NVIDIA. It was right over here, just underneath 257. So NVIDIA was in green territory. It started with a gap up today and it moved higher. Now, at the same time, uh, you need to know that the S&P 500 too was gapping up today. We have a strong upside day. But not only that, at the same time, the S&P was approaching the highs. It did not move to new highs, but it was approaching the highs. It was relatively strong. Now, at this point, the S&P is up. And again, that's my thought process and everything that uh, comes in together. And you need to understand the way uh, I'm thinking before I'm taking a trade. I was watching the S&P 500. It was up 1.2%. You said Nasdaq is up 1.5%. So the S&P is in green territory. The S&P is making its way to the highs, which will not be easy to move over because it already have a very strong resistance over here. But you can see it's just continued. So the S&P is green. But on the other hand, NVIDIA is greener than the S&P 500. Now, I already moved from NVIDIA right at this point because as you can see, it's a bit extended, but until like two minutes ago, I was still long NVIDIA. I have just 200 shares after taking my partial. So if you take a look at NVIDIA, you can see that NVIDIA is up almost 4%. The S&P is up just over 1%. NVIDIA is up almost 4%. Now, of course, at that point, it was up maybe 3%. So compared to the S&P 500, NVIDIA is much stronger. It is much stronger than the S&P. It's outperforming the S&P. When you go long, you don't want to go long a stock that is moving with the S&P 500. Although, it's, although this is fine to itself, because when you have a stock that is moving with the S&P 500, watch the lesson I just made, you know, two days, a few days ago about how to watch the S&P 500 intraday wise. It's extremely important webinar I just made. It's right here on my channel. It's a 25 minutes webinar. Please look through it. It's a very important one, I believe. Anyway, uh, the S&P is about to move to a new high. Uh, Nvidia is uptrending, which is good enough. Now, not only that, but I do have a beautiful technical formation. Look, Nvidia, it's a nice cup and handle formation. Here's the cup, here's the handle. Nvidia just moved over the cup and handle formation. And that was the point where we decided we're gonna buy Nvidia. Of course, the decision making was done when a video was probably 20 cents below 257, which is the point where we moved into the trade. So again, you look at the S&P 500, Wow, the S&P is up 1.1%. You look at NVIDIA, wow, the stock is up 3%. It's outperforming the market. It means it has more buyers than a normal moving stock today, which a normal would be with the S&P 500, approximately the same. NVIDIA is much stronger than that for whatever reason. I mean, I don't care what is the reason. Now you look at NVIDIA and you also notice that there's a nice technical formation. So now, when you took, take a look at the stock and you say, well, you know what, it's, it's not just uptrending, it didn't just start with a gap up, it also has a nice technical formation. Just at this point, you probably have not just the 50% chance to succeed, probably, I don't know, 55% chance to succeed, 60% to succeed, I don't know, but you're over 50. Now, you add to this, you add to that to the nice technical formation, the fact that NVIDIA is green, it's greener than the market. The S&P is moving higher, which means institutional buyers are buying with you. Now, you no longer have just 55% chance to succeed. It's not just the technical formation of NVIDIA now. It's a combination of the technical f uh, formation of NVIDIA, of the fact that it's outperforming the market, the fact that the S&P is moving higher. So you just 
put in everything together and at this point you realize that your chance to succeed is much greater than 50 and I don't want to say 70% or whatever but it's definitely over 50%. Now one more thing, one more ingredient, look at the daily. Always important to take a look at the daily. Here it is. So if you take a look at Nvidia's daily, you can see that, of course, it came down with the market very strong recently. Look at the entry point, 257, right over here, the same line I draw on the intraday. So it's a nice uptrend. It just moved over the recent high, which is again a resistance. It's trending higher. Now, I would normally regard this, this formation as an ugly uh, try a stock that is the, an ugly chart of stock that's trying to move out of the lows. But we have to remember the whole market recently moved down. I wouldn't say crashed, but definitely moved down strong. So now Nvidia with a lot of other stocks are trying to move higher from the lows and definitely looking great. Definitely looking great. So, okay, so now we have not only the fact that it's stronger than the market, the S&P is moving higher uh, and, and the, the daily also looking great. And I will add one more ingredient here, which is the whole number. You see, that's 257. Let's go back to the intraday. Let's go back to the five minute candles. Here's the 257 again. Now, what does a what does a whole number mean? When a stock is moving over a whole number, 257, it normally finds resistance. Uh, whole numbers, if you will watch on the level two, you will find out that when a stock is reaching a whole number, it will usually find a lot of sellers at the whole number. Why? People love to sell at whole numbers. It's a stupid thing, but people do that. Uh, when you ask an investor, where would you sell in video? So, well, if it will reach... Hmm, 257, I'll sell it. <laughs> you will never hear, hear a person saying, well, well, it will reach 256, 98, I will say. No, 257. And these guys are, in fact, putting sell orders in uh, a price like, uh, in a whole number price like 257, which is a stupid thing to do because then they are competing with a lot of other sellers at the whole numbers. When the stock is reaching that number, it will find a lot of sellers at the whole number and then maybe it will move over, maybe it won't. But if you're planning a long trade and it comes to the point where the technical formation is approximately at the whole number, you have an advantage because you will buy over the whole number. If you will buy over the whole number, then you're over the resistance of the whole number sellers. So look at how many ingredients I just put into this beautiful looking cake. Beautiful looking cake. So you just add up everything. And you, again, add the intraday with the technical formation, uh, cup and handle, the fact that it's over um, um, stronger than the market, the fact that the daily looks nice, the fact that you've got a whole uh, number there, everything. And the S&P moved to a new high at the same time you clicked in. It's just like, it doesn't get better than this. Seriously, it does not get better than this. And here's my result. To prove that I took NVIDIA today, I'm up three grand in NVIDIA. And the result today, hmm, I'm red. I'm down four grand. And I overtraded because as you can see, I had uh, four green trades today and only two losers. But sadly, sadly, I started today with these two losers, PTON and uh, DOCS. I started with two losers. And what happened really is the fact that I did not want to take my chance with another big loser. So I reduced my size. So everything I took afterwards did reduce the fact that I started down over $9,000 in red today and just managed to finish in only $4,000 down. It is a red day, uh, but I did manage to reduce it, but only with smaller size. That's another lesson. Maybe we're going to do another video about that. But always remember, if you're starting out red, you need to reduce your size because you're no longer capable of having the same men mental abilities as you had when you started out the training session. You are at the point where you're trying to get back to green and you're probably going to take the wrong trades. As it happened to me, I took the four green trades, which were great. But, and, and actually one, of, one loser in Baba, but I, I did well, but with smaller size. So I did not manage to get back to green, but it was the right thing to do. Anyway, I hope this lesson was... Uh, uh, helpful and um, I'll see you all in the trading room tomorrow we have a free trading room in YouTube did you know that so just join me to go uh, tomorrow if you like this video please give us a like
Uh, there's uh, a way to subscribe to my channel right over here and you can click on the notification bell uh, in order to uh, be notified of my future uploads and plenty of links here below you can trade the same platform I trade it's a Colmex platform uh, you, you will enjoy this platform it's an amazing platform thank you all for listening and I'll see you all tomorrow in my trading room live trading every day and sharing my PNL. bye traders <laughs>